you mentioned that the interview process that you've seen is like a higher manager, a couple of SEs and a, a panel. I've seen th- most of the interviews I've been in were completely different where it's hiring manager, a couple of SEs, a couple of salespeople, VP of sales or a sales director, then the panel interview, and then the VP mm-hmm. of sales engineering. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're yeah. laughing. You're laughing. I don't know why you that explain I'm, that. I'm, I'm laughing because obviously this is the, you know, I was being, um, I was providing like the best practice, the, the current best practice, and then reality comes in and lots of people get involved and it's, um, so you, you've seen both, right? Like there is the yeah. best practice, but you've also seen, like yeah. the common practice versus yeah. The best practice. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So why, why, like, why do you think the best practice is just a, what you mentioned? Sales, uh, SE manager, couple of SEs, panel interview. Why do you think that's the best sales, uh, best practice, not the other one? So I think, so I think that that is the best practice. I don't necessarily think it should be best practice. I think it could be built on a little bit, but I think it's the best practice because at some point they said, right, who needs, you know, who's important to, to be doing the assessment, obviously as a hiring manager, and then, you know, you want to have a senior leader come in. It's good to have that contrasted opinion. Uh, it's good to bring in people from the team. You know, it can be good to bring in people from the team also to give them interview experience and hiring experience as well. There's, there's, there's a benefit there. Yep. And then the panel stage, you know, suggests to me that somebody's, you know, that there's there's the emphasis on the most important thing to do well in this position is to present well. And so that's the job sample we want to see. Um, so uh, Peter Cohen said to me a few years back that he was working with a company and they were having issues hiring and they were making some mishires. And, um, and he looked at it and the recommendation he made was to have a job sample around discovery as well. So to include that in the process because it's a completely different skill set. Yep. Um, so they included a, a discovery session as a part of the, the process. Um, and um, and that and that really turned things around for that for that company. Um, so so I think that to your question, why then are so many more people brought in? I think sometimes it's a bit political. You know, you want to get the buy-in from different hire. Like if you're going to make a hire, and you uh, 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 you know you're aware that if it doesn't work, then if everybody said yes, we want to hire this person, then it's a lot more comfortable than if you've made that decision on your own. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so especially on the sales side, because I think from and this I'm, I'm generalizing completely because there are there are um, often hiring managers from my experience don't trust the assessment of the sales heads as much as they trust the assessment. And actually, the, the survey results show this as well. Um, I could actually give the exact numbers, but um, so but I, but I think there's a, there's a political element and there's just bringing lots of people in. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, more eyes see more and, you know, people have different perspectives, which is great. Um, what I've seen is that I think to confound that further, if you're going to have a bunch of people interview an individual, then rather than everybody asking the same questions and everybody going in broadly, it makes sense to say, you know, to if somebody from sales is there, focus broadly. But if you could just also specifically focus around sales acumen, for example, because that's a strength, you know. And, um, and we'd love to hear your rating there and somebody else on the discovery side. And then you've got the panel for the demo. So to try and to divide the time up with the candidate in the most effective way possible, I think is, a, is one of the recommendations that we've made. One of the things I do when I interview and I look for when I'm interviewing other people is if they're doing a discovery on me for the job. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, <clears throat> mainly because it is a discovery call. Right? I'm trying to discover as much about the interviewee as they're trying to discover as uh, about the company and myself yeah. so if they can't do a discovery and highlight their strengths in in the discovery where they're the product how are they going to do it about a product 100%. you know yourself more than anything else in the world yeah if, if you can highlight yourself in a positive value the problem with that is i see sometimes when i've been through interviews where the interviewer doesn't want the interviewee to ask questions until the end. Right. And I'm like, all right, fine. I'm happy to wait till the end, but I'm going to have a lot more questions than the last five minutes will afford me. Yeah. So are you okay setting up another time to continue this chat? If this, if the thing go well. Yeah. And so, again, so if you, if you were to be generous, you could say maybe they're replicating how it would be with a customer. Um, or maybe they just like having that structure. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they had a. Um, I think they had a bunch of questions that they wanted to make sure that they ask. Mm. 
and uh, they didn't take into account that I have my own set of questions that I want to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> Which was fine, because after the call, I told them, uh, I'm not done asking you questions. If That's you're a... still interested in me, yeah. do you mind if we set up a, like another half hour to chat? And yeah. they're like, yeah, sure. You know, so I think that was viewed positively. No. To your point on discovery, um, so one of the higher side chats we had was with somebody called Malcolm um, Malcolm Murphy, and uh, he uh, said that he, uh, during the hiring process, he said, I'm going to let you into a little secret, but don't let anyone know. So when they when they provide the brief for the panel, he'll pur purposefully, sorry, uh, leave that quite light on information because he's keen to see to what extent they jump on that, they want to set up a call with him, they want to do that discovery. Yep. Um, and then and then when we as candidates going through interview processes, we always recommend that they, you know, try and have that kind of conversation with the hiring manager. And it's really interesting that some some don't want to take take us up on that because it feels like a risk and they're they're going to kind of They're worried. Like, exactly. It's like why oh I don't ever want to take that risk. But you've got yep. but that in real life, that's a risk you need to take, you know, because the the winds of of speaking to somebody before the demo. Yeah. And making sure that you're aligned in terms of what you're doing and taking opportunities to build a relationship and that sort of thing is so big. Yeah. That something that's going to take it. And again, that's a good reflection on how it's going to be in reality afterwards. So if, if someone offers you a hand, take it. Right. Exactly. Because I've had I've actually in real life, when I'm working with customers, I try to find the champion. And if I'm doing a big demo, like a three hour demo where we're talking about different solutions and all that, I try to make sure that I have done the demo to the champion ahead of time. Yeah. Similarly, in a interview process if a manager offers their help take it uh, if yeah. they don't offer their help ask if they're okay if they can help if they can ask them a few questions it doesn't they can easily say no right if if you can't and the the thing that i like about that too is when you jump on a call and you do something and they give you feedback it's a good time to show that you're coachable and take their feedback into account while doing the demo yeah I've I've done this where I coached someone on how to do a demo. Like they did something, they did it wrong. I didn't like it. I told them how they can do to fix it, and then we do the demo in the panel, and they do the exact same thing they were doing before. I'm like, they're out. I'm. Yeah. It's not like they. I'm not expecting them to know everything, but I'm expecting them to try to change a little bit based yeah. on my feedback. So yeah. Yeah. 100%. And I think what everything we're talking about here goes back to this idea of trying to simulate real life. Uh, because you can ask a competency question around, you know, how do you prepare for a customer demo? And it could be in that based in that competency based answer. Somebody says, you know, I always go out of my way to, you know, try and speak with the speak with the with the, the key stakeholder, the champion beforehand, and so on. Yeah. But someone might say it, but in reality, they may, they may not do it when faced with that kind of the risk risk return question yeah. in their head. And when you, when you see it in reality, then you can, it, I think, it provides that bit more kind of confidence. One one thing about re simulating reality versus interviews I've seen is that in reality, if you do a discovery call with a customer, the email after the discovery call is not "thank you for your time, I really appreciate the opportunity." It's yeah. more "this is what we discussed in the call. This is what yeah. you're looking for." And yeah. why don't we like I do that during an interview? After interviews, I send this and exactly. You're proven. So, like hey, this is a, we made a discovery. This is what you're looking for in an SE. This is how I fit the role perfectly. I'm looking yeah. forward to next steps. You know, yeah. so. And also, if you're a hiring manager, the coachability is really important for them to understand. You know, it, it, it feels a lot more comfortable when you see that somebody's coachable, that they listen, and that sort of thing. It's hard not to be rooting for that individual where you've you know you've had the conversation beforehand and you see them kind of playing it out, and and you know that's the ultimate decision maker. So yeah, and like uh, even if you don't want to take what they give you as feedback at least have some logic behind why you decided not to do it yeah and make sure you mention that during the call not just ignore altogether so yeah okay um, 